Hey guys, it's Jim. What's happening today? Hope you're doing well. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to talk about something a little bit different today. And what I'm going to talk about, let me get my microphone in the right place. I'm going to talk about, um, what am I going to talk about? I'm going to talk about Analog Effects Pro, which is uh, part of the Nick collection. And it's a really fun product. I did a brief sort of uh, mention of it in a video, I don't know, a week or two ago, uh, when I was comparing Luminar to the Nick collection by DxO. And the Nick collection is seven different uh, products that are uh, all do different things, but Analog Effects Pro is kind of analog, vintage, kind of uh, gives you some grungy, kind of cool stuff, but it's basically a whole, the whole analog idea. And so um, nothing says analog like a Polaroid t-shirt. So I'm wearing the right shirt to talk about the right software. So let's go ahead and dive into that. Okay, so uh, starting with this photo, uh, and in fact, this is the only photo I'm gonna use. Um, this photo is something I shot in Paris, just like a little corner bookstore thing that's freaking just cool looking, to be honest. So that's the original photo. And so I'm gonna stick that guy here into Analog Effects Pro 2. Um, this is the most current version in the Nick collection. And the Nick collection, you can get uh, the link below. And no, that's not an affiliate link. If you buy it, great. If you don't, that's great either way. Um, it doesn't matter to me. And just to be clear, it's not an affiliate link, so I don't make any money on it. Um, but that doesn't matter. I'm not trying to get you to buy it. I just want to talk about it because it's really cool. It's really fun. And I've been using it for years. I had the Nick collection years ago and then sort of lost track of it when I first started Luminar and Aurora because that's all I did. Uh, but I wanted to get back to it because I really like it and it's my favorite app in the Nick collection to be honest. Uh, but anyway, you can read about that at that link below. It's, it's seven different plugins. Anyway, Analog Effects Pro, as the name implies, is about analog and vintage effects, as I've already said. And you can see here that it's already created something that looks very different. So let me show you the before and after. Here we go. And this is just a built-in preset. And so let me give you a little tour of this product here. Um, over here, you have a, a button, and it defaults to this classic camera. But if you come over here, there's they call them tool combinations. But basically, these are different. I'll call them styles. Um, and, and maybe categories is, is a better uh, name for it. But basically, all these tools over here on the left-hand side, you can either build your own, which is down here, and we'll get to that in a minute, or you can click on any of these combination sort of categories, and it'll default and show you a number of different presets. Within the presets, you can make adjustments, and the adjustments, as you can probably see, they show up over here on the right-hand side. This is the group of filters that fall into each category. So let me go ahead and just walk through this. As you click on them, these presets load, and as you can see over here on the right-hand side, things change because the right-hand side are the filters that comprise the preset that I'm choosing here on the left. I like this classic camera three, kind of vintage and faded, a little bit of grunge. And again, to compare it to the before and after, you can see that it's definitely given it sort of a washed out look. And we'll get into customizing these things on the right-hand side in a moment. I'm gonna go through a few of these categories. I love classic camera five. I just think that's really cool looking, maybe a tad yellow. So, you know, you can change the film type over here. I can pick a cooler film type and go something like that. Well, that didn't cool it off, did it? That's, that's actually really cool. Um, you can also go into the basic panel and take the saturation down. And again, you can see you're starting to get really vintagey kind of things. There's the compare. You just click on that to show you the before and after. Uh, you've seen this slider, and then this is a top and bottom comparison. And of course, you can uh, change it like that, which actually looks a lot better. Uh, let me go back to the full screen. Um, so that's classic camera, and there's a few different presets built in. And yes, you can build your own. We'll talk about that in a moment, too. Uh, black and white is pretty neat. There's some nice little black and white presets. I'm not going to go through all of this because we'd be here all day, and uh, you'd probably rather do something else. Uh, color cast. These are kind of interesting. As you can see, some of these have kind of light leaks. And um, as you'll see, there's a filter called light leaks. You can choose for, choose from a number of different filters here and then adjust the strength and that sort of thing. So a lot of fun, a lot of flexibility for creating these different sort of effects. Motion. There's a motion blur filter. You can do this zoom and rotate. And all you do is you just come over here and you can just adjust your filter accordingly. And you can check out how that works. If you want to rotate that blur, you just start dragging this. And if you look on the outside, you can see how that's turning. 
and then I'll just go like that, let it go, and it basically starts rotating the blur. I can come back over over here and recenter that. I could put it there instead. Um, I can grow the size of that if I want, so it's not quite so bad. And I can also, um, you know, you can see protect the center is the same as that. The zoom strength you can turn down a little bit, so it's not quite as intense. Um, and the rotate strength I can I can lessen as well. Again, just kind of fun and different things. This one also has the um, motion blur, um, and you know you can just add these things, and then you can choose the blur direction, right? So there's a lot of different things that you can do. Again, here's the blur direction, right? So you can just kind of see how this works. Um, sort of drag that around and choose the direction of your motion blur. Here's a couple of other presets. Again, they're all, all the presets I think, I think are actually pretty cool, but they're all adjustable. So you might look at this one and think, you know, what the hell happened to that? Um, but you can come in here and fix it, change it, adjust it, and then save your own. Um, this one looks pretty cool here, I think. Um, I probably would make that center area a bit larger. I don't want to blur the whole thing. That kind of ruins it for me because then it just looks like a mess. Um, but something like that looks pretty cool. When you hover over and you have one of those blur filters, you get that grid that you can adjust. You can move your mouse off the screen and it removes that. And now you got just sort of a gentle bokeh on the outside. And that was with the motion blur. And you can see it has a little bit of zoom and rotate blur as well. You can change this significantly. You can come in here and change the film type. Um, you could, uh, you know, customize it. So a lot of fun, a lot of uh, different sort of effects. That's motion wet plate. Um, I'm not going to go into wet plate uh, photography. It's it's an old film technique, and truthfully, I don't know a lot about it. But it's darkroom chemically stuff that ends up giving you some sort of strange artifacts in your photos. I don't know a lot about it. I've read about it. I've heard about it, but I don't follow it. Um, I was never a film guy. I've been digital pretty much my whole life. But you do have some wet plate options, and you see you can choose here the different sort of photo plate that's used. Again, that will customize the look of your photo. So that's wet plate. Here's subtle bokeh. You know, here's subtle bokeh too. Again, just very gentle. Here you've got sort of, um, uh, not sort of, you got a, basically a gradient mask that you can adjust and do these kind of things to adjust the amount of blur in the photo. That gives you the ability to create sort of a tilt shift look, which I think is cool. Um, and if you want to increase the strength of the blur, just go something like that. And it's a little too crazy, but you know, you can do that if you were if this was a uh, like a landscape or, or actually something shot from a high vantage point, so like from the top of a tower in a city looking down on a city, you could get that thin strip of stuff and focus and blur the rest and really create that sort of m miniature city look, which is popular in, uh, in Tilt Shift. So uh, that's an idea. So there's, again, a few presets in each of these. Um, and then um, if you want to get out of subtle bokeh, you just click that each time. Double exposure, you can add a second photo, create a double exposure. There's some things that are built in for, again, preset looks. Some of them are kind of strange. Again, very custom, that's actually kind of cool. Very customizable, as you can see. Um, here we go, come on, hello. There we go. Uh, move that around, that sort of thing. So a lot of, again, interesting, um, you know, it, it's, it's called analog, and it's definitely analog. Um, but I keep saying vintage. To me, you can create a lot of vintage looks, but all of these aren't vintage. Uh, toy camera, this one actually might be kind of vintage. That looks pretty vintage to me. Uh, let me get this one. And there's one down here that I like. I think it's this one, yeah, Toy Camera 7. It's very dark, but again, you can come in here with the adjustments. You could say, well, I wanna brighten that a little bit. Maybe it's too dark. Uh, maybe I wanna lessen the contrast. Maybe that uh, made it too bright. Um, you know, you've got lens, distor lens distortion here, another cool filter. Um, go from pin cushion to barrel. If This is literally adding distortion, which, you know, like I'm in Luminar, I'm like, oh my God, get rid of distortion when I'm trying to make my sort of hero shots. But with this one, you're adding distortion, you're just creating these custom fun looks. And let's do a compare again. I mean, this is fun. I mean, you know, it's fun to me. Hey, I don't know. I'm a guy wearing a Polaroid t-shirt, so maybe it's not so fun to you. But I like this kind of stuff. I think it's a, it's just fun to experiment with. Here, vintage, right? Here's that vintage camera look. Uh, this one's got a light leak in it, right? You got frames, so there's another filter. So you can see light leaks. You could change the light leak if you wanted. There's three different categories. You can increase or decrease the strength. You've got frames, another option here. Maybe you want a black, um, 
you know, or film strip, right, with the black frame. I think this one's cool. I've used this one on a number of photos. It looks like you expose the film a little bit there. Fun stuff. It's it's just good, clean fun. Personally, I mean, you got to buy the Nick collection for fifty bucks. And um, if you've already had the Nick collection, basically you're buying support, uh, which I did and I talked about in that previous video. But for me, if you don't have the Nick collection, I personally think Analog Effects Pro is worth fifty bucks. Now. It depends on what you want to do with your 50 bucks. Obviously, that's a personal decision, but I, there's so many interesting and creative things you can do here that I, I personally think that alone is worth 50 bucks, but that's me. And then here's multi lens. We can create these different sort of uh, triptychs, if you will. And, and then you can move it around, right? So you can move the photo around uh, within your triptych. So you get a little bit different look than maybe what was given to you uh, by default. So that kind of thing. Uh, there's different multi-lens sort of arrangements. There's another uh, triptych that's done that way. That's kind of cool, right? And again, maybe you want to move that and say, I want the title of the store up there. So you have flexibility. There's quad, you know, here's a uh, quad, right? And again, move it around. You can tilt it, um, you know, that sort of thing. So lots of fun, lots of flexibility. That's multi-lens. Um, so let me uh, let me go over here to just uh, build a camera. So this is camera kit. Now it's going to bring over the filters that I've got because what you might want to do is take one of these presets and then say, well, I like that, but I want to add a vignette. Now you probably wouldn't add a vignette to this because it's a, a multi lens, but that's how you would go take a preset and then start adding stuff to it. But what I'm going to do, you can see there's a uh, either a plus if you want to add it, and there's a minus if you've already got it and you want to take it away. So I'm going to get rid of these ones that are included in this preset. And if you look at the right hand side, you can see everything's disappearing. And all that's left is just the uh, the basic um, adjustment that was included, right? I'm going to reset that, which is what this button does here. And now I'm back to my base photo. So if I do a compare, right, there's nothing to compare it to because that's the base photo. So here's where you can come in and build your own custom look. So maybe I want to drag the detail extraction. Maybe I want to dark, oops, darken it a little bit. Uh, add some contrast. Maybe I want to jack that saturation up. Okay, so I like what I'm doing. Maybe I want to add some bokeh. I just come over here, and this is where I start building my own and just getting creative. Maybe I want to add a little bokeh, right? So I want to focus in on these books here. Um, yeah, I think something like that. And maybe I want to increase the blur strength a little bit. Again, customizing what I want to do. Uh, maybe I decide I don't like bokeh. All right, just hit the minus sign and it's gone. I've still got my basic adjustments and if I don't like those, I hit that to reset it. Um, maybe I want to do a light leak and maybe I want to add some dirt and scratches just to kind of create a beat up kind of vintage look. So you just click on these filters, they'll drop down and they'll close the next one when you click on a subsequent one. So that's what I did already in basic. I'm gonna go to light leaks here we go. That's the, just the default. I'm going to go to, let's say, crisp. I'm just making this up, people. Um, eh, I don't really like that. You just click through it. It builds it pretty quickly. Yeah, that one's kind of fun. And then you can adjust the strength of it up or down, right? So I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm not actually not going to do that one. I'm going to keep experimenting. So bear with me while I mess around. This one might be kind of, ooh, that's kind of fun. It almost looks like sunshine's coming in. And maybe I want to move that up a little bit. So I got a light leak kind of coming across and actually it kind of does look a little bit like sunshine. So let's say I like that look and then I go into the dirt and scratches. So you get different categories. Dust and lint, scratches, organic and eroded. I'll just go to eroded and you can see it's gonna drop these splotches. It's basically a texture. It drops the splotches on top. And if it's too much, you just take the strength down and that sort of thing. So. It's very flexible. This is not meant to be an entirely comprehensive tutorial. Also notice you do have control points. Control points are basically um, what allow you to control specific parts of the image with the adjustment that you're on. So uh, it may be better uh, here in the basic panel. I'll just say add control point. I'll drop a control point there. And you can see I've got detail extractor, brightness, I've got contrast, and I've got saturation. So. All you do is with the control point is you increase or decrease the radius. You can move it around the photo and then you can customize each of these individual components within that control point. And so that was 
when the Knit Collection was really popular a few years ago before Google made it free and sort of started ignoring it. The control points are the things that I think got people most excited about the Knit Collection. By the way, I'm gonna highlight that and hit delete. I don't really want it, but I wanted to point it out. Um, but you can do that on these filters. You can see that the control points are just at the bottom. You can just go in there, click one, add it. And then if you like it, you can just all, also copy and paste it across your photo, or you can just, um, uh, you know, add different ones if you want to make different adjustments in different places. Um, so back to this one, I'm creating this vintage look. Let's say I want to add a frame. So I'm going to go add a frame to it. Um, and I kind of like that. So I've got this old film looking frame. I've got a light leak that looks like sunshine. I've got some dirt and scratches and I got some basic adjustments. And there's my before and there's my after. Very different, kind of unique, vintage, analog, you know, whatever you want to call it. The point is, it's really powerful. It's really a lot of fun. And by the way, if you like this, you can just hit save and then you just call this my new preset and you hit okay. And there it is, it shows up in custom. So I was in cameras, right, which is here, but down here on the left is custom and there's my new preset. I'm gonna delete it. It asks me to confirm, I say sure. Um, you can import presets if you make them and share them with your friends. Um, you've got a history panel which is pretty cool, right? So these are all the different things I've been going through on this photo. So, you know, you might just say, well, Toy Camera 7 was pretty cool. I think I'll go back to that. And so it'll go back uh, and you gotta give it a minute because it's backing up through a whole lot of stuff. Apparently it's gonna back up through all this stuff. I didn't know that. Maybe I should know these things. Here we go. Um, I'm kind of having fun. Half the fun of doing these videos is I hit buttons and something happens and I kind of scratch my head and say, why in the hell did that happen? Um, so half the time I'm learning. Um, so here we go. It didn't go through all the adjustments, but it did back up to where I was uh, at Toy Camera 7, which by the way, I really like that look. I just think it's a little too dark. So I might would brighten it a little bit and um, I think I would be done to be honest. So let me compare. There's the before. And there's the after. You can see uh, it added some lens distortion, right? It made it more of a pin cushion. Let me show you again the before. You can kind of tell by looking at it. I think it looks kind of cool. It's almost like, well, pin cushioned, right? It's kind of pushed in a little bit, a little bit of curvature. If you don't like it, hey, guess what? You just slide pin cushion to the right and it'll start to get back to the normal sort of alignment. Um, that's how it works, my friends. I'm going to get out of history. Uh, I'm going to go back here to camera and uh, really I don't need to do anything else. I think I've covered everything. Um, yeah, I think I have. Oh, there's a loop and a histogram, right? If you wanna look at that stuff, I don't really care to be honest, especially on a photo like this. I'm not really paying attention to the histogram. I'm just looking at the photo and saying, I like it or I don't like it. And then when you're done, you just uh, save the photo, which should be right up here, I believe. Uh, hello, maybe it's not up there. Oh, save. Hello. Saves in the very bottom. I should know these things. Um, I forgot. I was thinking I came to this from um, from Lightroom, but I didn't. I opened this as a standalone, and that's something to know. You can use it as a standalone, or you can use it uh, as a plug-in to Lightroom and other places like that. Um, generally, when I do my own editing, I keep my photos in Lightroom, so I'm doing it as a plug-in, but for videos, I use things as standalone. So I can just hit save, and then uh, save that, and it'll drop it... Uh, back, I guess, wherever it came from, which was on my desktop right there. So here's Paris Bookstore, and that's the final. And that's how it works, my friends. I hope that's helpful, um, and if it's not, sorry, I guess. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna do some more videos like this where I kinda play around with other stuff. I still love Luminar and Aurora. You'll see plenty more from me about that, but I'm also having fun showing you some other things that I like to play with and experiment with, because for me, this whole photography thing is all about being creative and sort of expressing whatever ideas creative uh, sort of thoughts you may have about creating something different. And that's very different than what I started with. Hope you like it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, hit that, uh, or leave a comment down below. And if you haven't yet, uh, like my channel or subscribe, whatever it's called, I can't even keep up anymore. Uh, hit subscribe, like the video, share with your friends, and come back soon. I'm gonna be coming uh, back real soon myself with a lot of videos, so thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Have a great day and adios.